Hello there, and welcome to episode 2 of my gameplay series of Firemind. The fortress meant to be the mountain home and meant to be the doom of the elves on this fine continent. It's also a gameplay series about this fine young dwarven lady who has lost her fine young cavy boar during an attack of the vile elven bandits at Boat Thrower, season 4 by the way, and she has sworn to give her queen a mountain home. She didn't tell her exactly about the fact that she does plan to kill all the elves up here. So, episode 1, I did select the place, I did all the preparations, and today we will actually get ourselves towards the mining area, and our starting crew of seven will also get to say hello to the new people, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so we have a few migrants that arrive, so the first of many that have heard of this place have arrived, and this is also a roleplay run. That means this story is going to be a lot revolving around the main protagonist, or dwarven lady here, the one with the revenge issues, and we're also seeing here the construction of a magma fortress or a magma spitting fortress. If you are aware of um, Boat Murdered, I want to do something something similar here. I always wanted to do. So we got a couple of uh, bedrooms here and it's time to work with work orders. So I have set up the kitchen area, so I want to get started with that. Of course we only cook lavish meals because what else? Well, technically it's just kind of a book that experienced players like to use. So we got the, the alcohol production and to round that up we're going to make ourselves rock pots. Now we make meals until we have like 200. I don't want to overdo that right now. With the drink though, overdo as much as you want to. I want an end stockpile of 5,000 drink and those rock pots, we keep producing them like that. Okay, that's my industry for food and drink in a nutshell. We do want to make beds though. That's what I've been after. So beds, boom. We need a couple of these always at our disposal and we need doors. So let's make rock doors. What kind of rock do I have available here? Limestone and chert. Well, I do like the idea of limestone doors. They surely look pleasant and bright. So we're going to go for that. All right. So we got the basics nailed down. I don't want to overburden my fortress right now with too many tasks because we got a lot of work up ahead of us to make the irrigation happen. I hope that'll work. So this will be the, the draining chamber. All right. And we also need to set up a pasture for the animals because the new migrants have brought animals and my founding crew, of course, had animals as well. I brought some goats, some llamas, and obviously we have yak cows now as well. And there is, there is Orkavi. All right, wonderful. So, since the death of a Cavi boar was the beginning of the whole problem, let's see. It already is owned by Silop. Oh boy, this man. We need to check out this man. So I know him well. <laughs> so our first new arrivals nobody less than Silop lightning ringed the royal engraver of her highness of boat thrower this man has done all the engravings in this fortress and he has come to this place to 
pay us some company. Oh, I like that. I like this so much. This is always the best part when people that you know from the previous stories come on up. So I think this man wants to be a protagonist, don't you think? He really had a, a, a strong urge to come this way. I mean, it goes that far that I know these Cobaltite items, I made them at the beginning of the story of Gauguin Ross. Anyways, so... He has that cavy pup. I love this. <laughs> so, yeah, self-fulfilling histories. Let's have a look at this man, and um, uh, we want to see how he looks like. He's tall and very skinny. A very long, neatly combed beard. Neatly combed sideburns. So he's a tidy person, I see. <laughs> a neatly combed long mustache, all right? <laughs> Clearly an artist. Clean-shaven head. Okay, so I imagine this this guy looking very, very much like a scholar to me. All right, so I like this. We got a lot of really, really nice things happen or happening already. So this will be the first quarters. And to those of you who weren't around for episode one, the fortress itself will be doing its craft dwarf ship underground and the living and the social areas will be up above here but for for now we will keep the 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 luxury and all those things at a minimum because we are after all still in the founding phase and there's still a lot of work to do but nevertheless i think one thing we should do I want to check on out what kind of religion Silab has. So he is a Vukar follower. So yeah, it's therefore also about time to set up our first temple. So yeah, that's gonna be the first one, but I'm gonna replace that one here. Starting out with a temple to say or praises and or thanks to the Lord of Life and Death. Oh, well, well, death mostly. Life and uh, all the other attributes are, are with another god. Good. There we go. Oh yeah, I just realized that I can't floor these places later. That oh, doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Okay, so this chamber here is going to be very, very important as it will work as a drain for the irrigations. Because I have figured that we need to get ourselves some fields to work with up and running ASAP. So that's what we're going to do. Luckily, I have the water supply of the brook next door here, so we can make a very, very easy irrigation system going here. Just like that. Alright. Alright. I always try to get the food and drink production done as my very first priorities, because before that's done, I always feel as if I am sitting on a powder keg. Or, well, an empty keg, which will be way worse. Speaking about which, I forgot a very, 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 very important thing. The mugs, for your sake, the mugs. That's really bad. I'm very sorry for you guys. You know, if you don't provide mugs for your dwarves, they will just slam dunk their faces into the barrels and drink that way. That's a very humiliating way to absorb your fluid, and we we, we can't prove that, okay? We just can't. Alright, so the technique will be quite easy. I will fill up each of these chambers with water, and when it's filled with water, I will seal off the entrances. And then I'll open up the hatch, dump the water away, and what's left is muddied soil that will nourish the people of Firemind. It's a pretty simple thing, and it will work a charm. 
And now let's kill some trees. We gotta get started somewhere. All right. Meanwhile, the temple is being created, and the beds, uh, the the trees for the beds are being chopped. There we go. So very soon we will have a couple of rooms to live at. So let's make some crazy things like these. You know, I really want to be a little bit more creative with this fortress in terms of rooms and decorations. After all, this is supposed to be the cultural center of the civilization on this continent. Season 6, probably the last season for the Savage Lands before I retire the series, will be me coming back to the old continent and purging the hordes of goblins and uh, other monsters that infest our homelands. I think that will be a very, very noble thing, and if everything goes right, Miss uh, Lady Uzol here will be the... At least the Duchess of this place, maybe even the Queen, probably. She certainly has ambitions. Speaking about ambitions, I wanted to give you a few more insights about who Uzol Ordust actually is. I found the uh, personalities here very uh, funny when I checked out her values. She personally values tranquility and a peaceful day, and... There, I was first off like, oh no, I wanted to have you a warmonger, but then she sees war as a useful means to an end. I was relieved. Trade-wise, there's also one thing that really fits to her story. She's quick to form negative views about things. So the moment those elven bandits showed up and murdered her cavy pup, she took that very precisely to the point where she was like, all elves suck and all elves have to go i find that absolutely organic and i appreciate dwarf fortress for tinkering me a lunatic dwarf lady that has an appetite for genocide now so we're going to go and have some fun with these i just paused the game to make sure that everything is going to plan i did order a lot of things at once. Here we get now warnings about damp stone. This is exactly below of the brook, so everything according to my expectations. All right, I don't need to worry too much about food and drink though. We are living next to a forest. We can forage like crazy. This uh, brings me to the point like plant gathering. So, we got somebody who's a novice herbalist. I do want somebody else being a herbalist here too, though. But maybe not today. Maybe we will go for one herbalist today. Alright, so... Where do I will put... Where will I put Silop in that whole story, though? The Royal Engraver of Her Highness, Mamoose Strapshoots. So... I wonder what his motivations will be. I mean, ah, oh well, it, I, I think we don't need to wonder about his motivations too long, as it's pretty clear that somebody like him comes for the prestige of a project like that. I mean, heck, it's the new mountain home. Most dwarves consider adamantite as a, a stuff of legends, and therefore... Who wouldn't want to go and dig for the stuff of legends? Now, so what is happening here? That doesn't look right. So let's see. Building materials. Yeah, right. So it's uh, going to use any type of stone block. Actually, I like this. Let's. Uh, Wait a sec, we do have stone blocks available. I need to double check these configurations. Something is not right here. So, let's see. Edit filters. Global settings. Blocks on and on. 
so... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, the turret was just not checkmarked. Okay. New fortress, new materials, new things to keep in mind. Alright, I just realized that I put up a few levers to few. Yeah, you always need all the levers. How many levers do you need? Yes. So, let's do this. And bedrooms, my friends! Bedrooms. Oh, 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 wait a sec. I said bedrooms, not bedroom. Let's put that on multi, so it uh, does make seven bedrooms. So, these are for the founding crew. The other eight people that have arrived will, of course, receive their quarters shortly after. Alright, this place is so much fun. And I, I do have some some plans and ideas in mind for the future. All right, so once that thing has been carved out, we are pretty much ready to do the whole irrigation thing. We need rock mechanisms like crazy, but I mean, I haven't uh, made up a proper plan for the workshop area yet. This is all very bare bones and very basic. So, we need another thing here, and that's bins. Wooden bins. I really want to store things here. And I think I will make the, the story of Udol evolve slowly. I mean, the idea from the narrative point of view there is she doesn't want to she didn't want to betray her queen. She didn't uh, go and volunteer herself for the expedition leader to just declare war on the elves who killed her carry pup. No, no, no. It's, it's a lot more complex than that. It's more about the opportunity to do something great and with the power and the opportunity I, I will make her succumb to the uh, to the bloodlust at least that's the plan so we will start slowly with chopping one too many trees and maybe trading something wrong to the elves maybe with a bit of a glee in uh, in mind something like that all right i already have a few ideas like you might have noticed so let's drop down the beds here. I don't want to make this a sleeping room. I figured that this will be a fine office. And uh, I will make a thingy here. And so this place is supposed to be giving off flare of wealth. And therefore, the whole areas here the, the the rooms are big and we don't make small rooms and like you know so i also already ponder about some pompous structures you know probably make up a real prestigious uh, blueprint for a living area something like that this is supposed to be a place of splendor, and I really want to use this series as an opportunity to make up cool things and uh, consider stuff that I usually don't do. All right, so we're getting closer to the point where we can go for our irrigation, and we have our first caravan arriving. All right. But we don't really need anything from them, but I see it as good customs to put up a trade depot for the weary to rest and present their goods. In my imagination, the people in this fortress also buy something there. Sadly, the uh, economy system isn't implemented yet, so yeah. Alright. Why are my miners dying? Game, please. Oh, because the uh, because they're locked in down there. Whoopsie daisy. 
Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good old accidental murders of your people. <laughs> yeah, well, DF hack saves lives yet again. Jeez. Okay, well, nobody got hurt. We can proceed as planned. <laughs> I'm really happy that the hack gives you these things. All right, so our outpost liaison comes for a chat, and I want to buy me what actually. Is there anything we 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 really need? Not as of yet. Or tell you what, we're going to order us some raw clear glass because Udol likes that stuff. Yeah, I have. I have checked out her personal preferences too, so we we have a full-on insight in the mind of this young lady. Okay, so it's time to chop in the, the water thingy. Damn, can't talk anymore. My English is not Englishing anymore either. So we lock the doors now. I mean, nobody's down there anymore, right? Right. And we now lock these. All that lever flicking. And then somebody will come and punch a hole in there. And that's going to be your water supply. There we go. So, now we... All those. As you can see now, water is entering this place. And we can pull it now again. And pull it again. We don't need much more than that. And now we can just drain the place again. Just like that. Done. And now you see the excess water is just uh, falling downstairs. Where it can dry and evaporate and what's left is muddied soil that we can work with and our farming can begin i like this way of irrigating fields as it is really super easy to pull off and except for accidentally locking in your miners and stuff like that nothing bad can happen okay so this time i'm gonna be looking up who we have here so erdem lorum Rist. i vaguely remember that name isn't that the coincidental tombs that's the place yeah, the local government. So there's a lot of people of Kogan Ross migrating towards here. But I see this as only a very, very logical thing to happen. Because, you know, why stop here? A legendary clothier. So lots of people who come from the previous safe file <laughs> migrate towards here. Love it. Um, why are you not... Ah, oh, yeah, here they're waiting for their buddies. So, we got... Tune Sounded Oils. This is an interesting one. This is the, uh... The widower of the, uh... Former Duchess of Kukana Ross. <laughs> she drowned. <laughs> Damn. You see, there's a lot of interesting persons here. And I can already foresee that there will be a lot of drama and things arising here. All right. What are they waiting for, actually, I wonder? Why are we not entering the map? Usually they, uh... These people just arrive and flock towards their new homes. All right. So... That means we got... Up on the horizon, a lot of people from the previous fortress that will most likely start living here. So, are they still standing on the hilltop? Dudes, what's wrong? So, it looks to me, yeah, 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 they're, they're just waiting for the rest of the people here, that's that. 
So we got a legendary fighter here too. A child. Okay. Yeah, the population count keeps rising and rising, so I must assume that it's just them waiting for the rest of the caravan. So there must be a person 24 too, huh? Or whom are they waiting for? That's a little bit weird. I've never seen that behavior. But in all honesty, I also never followed my um, new arrivals like that. Because usually I didn't pay that much attention to them. But looks like they are now finally moving, huh? No, still not. Well, there's uh, the kids are standing still on the hilltop playing. And yeah, all right. Nothing bad has happened, no bugs, no nothing. They just, uh, I, I bet they were just standing on top of the mountainside and enjoyed the view. I would stand a while and rest up if I had arrived after a journey from here to there. This is quite the distance for hobbly little dwarven legs. All right, so let's set up a temple to our lord and master Vukar. So, to all of you who are new to this place, so Vukar is the god of death and suicide. He is the one of the major deities of this civilization, the Towers of Age, and the second most important god here is Nashas, the goddess of love. So these guys are goth dwarves, basically. I mean, seriously, they venerate death and suicide and love. That's goth. <laughs> so, apart from that, they also love to worship wealth, jewels, you know, normal dwarven things, deformity in between, I don't know. We, we said, we, we luckily don't have a, uh, the, uh, there's one god missing. The god of muck is not around yet. So, anyways, we're going to go and dedicate this one directly to Vukar, the Cathedral of Ghosts. Like I said, goth. Any further questions? Goth. All right, so since we have now the, the royal engraver here, we're going to assign him to do these things. But I want to consider I don't know who I'm going to put up there. Somebody of these will be the new engraver. I don't want Slob to do everything here. I want some other artists working because I know that in this game, your artist's personality flows directly to the art and therefore it's cooler if you have different artists. And I also see, see this as something where this old pro might some... I, I see this from a story here, but uh, that he will teach the young ones the arts of engraving properly. You know, I, I, I imagine him retiring here, you know? Teaching the next generation to fulfill the job as great as he did and enjoy his, his high high and prestigious uh, position there because as you can see here this guy is an absolute machine printing down engravings in a massive tack and a massive speed and they are all super high quality <laughs> so yeah that's the uh but benefit of having a legendary dude migrating into your forest, uh, forest, fortress right away. So I want to have a broker dwarf. So let's see. I do have a skilled negotiator here, but I want to have an appraiser. Sadly, oh, wait a sec. Can you check for appraiser? Yes, yes, you can. So this man here is my appraiser. I have selected him. He's one of the founding members to be the person here because a proficient appraiser can give you a pretty nice um, 
number behind these things. Okay, so let's finish the last few bits and bobs. Let's do the farm plots. And with that, my food industry is ready. So I'm going to employ here a, another planter because, you know, I, I like to have the double planter action. Two legendary planters are all a fortress needs, in my humble opinion, and technically one can suffice, but it's always good to have a replacement jurist in case something bad might happen. You never know. You never know. So, where we go. So seeds will be stored here, and now we're going to plant out the pigtails, and the first artifact of the real Avus is in the making. So my good friends, I will be completing the designators here, but I will also outro for today's episode, because it is a good moment to wait for that. I bet that we should set up a Clothia's workshop here for that purpose, and I'll be putting down these things in the next episode. I think we've made a wonderful progress so far. The basics of the fortress are down. The fortress itself is still very, very basic. There's still many, many things to get down there, but I think we're making we're well on the way. The most important things are now done. We have food getting produced here, and we're having it processed over here, so nobody will starve or die of dehydration anymore. And nobody, to make it even more important, will have to drink water. So, my good friends, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this day. Drop me a comment down below leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and to all of you who want to watch more episodes faster, I usually pre-upload a bunch of these, and in the channel membership for two bucks is included to have access to everything I pre-upload, so if you want to have a quick and easy way to support me, this is a nice way for me to return something, and apart from that, check out PayPal, Patreon, and buy me a coffee. I love this series and i appreciate you guys supporting me so much thanks for everybody doing that and especially thanks to you watching this video because without you guys this series would be worthless that being said have a great day until we meet again goodbye